Hello guys, welcome to drilling-academy.com. If you ever wonder or ask with questions like why certain casing pressure is greater than certain drill pipe pressure or contradiction, what affect them and in what ways, what make a kick happen, then you are at the right place. This following session is designed to take you to the root of the answers to those questions in 50 minutes. You know the key aspects of formation pressure and its two important characteristics which are porosity and permeability. The whole point of well control is based upon these bases. Let's start. First thing first, we start with formation porosity. Now let's look at these rocks in here in number one, two, and three. You see, number one, we see old rock in here. Number two, we have, we see some space between the rock, among the rocks. And number three, we see these spaces are connected together. So formation porosity, right? Number one in formation number one in here, we, we see that it, there's no porosity. So what is porosity? Porosity is the percentage of pore space to the volume of the bulk rock. Formation fluid, if yes, it is contained in these pores. Measurement is in percentage. Now we come to formation permeability. Now we look at this picture here in number one, formation number one here, there is no pore space in between the rock. Now we come to the number two, we see there are pore space between the rock, but these spaces, these pores are not connected together. So formation permeability, what is it? So if the pores are connected together, look at number three, formation number three here, we see the pore spaces, all the pores are connected together. So the fluid in the pores now can flow. The measure of how easy formation allows fluid to flow through is called permeability. Measurement unit is Darcy. So this number three formation here, it has permeability. It has porosity and the pores are connected together. So this is permeability. <laughs> So now we come to the next concept is formation pressure. What is it? It is the pressure of the fluid contained in the pore space of the bulk rock. So let's look at this formation in here. For example, this is the bulk rock and it has pores. It has pore spaces in here. And in, in the, there is formation fluid. We don't know where, what, what, what it is. It could be water, it could be hydrocarbon, oil, or gas. This formation fluid is contained within the pore spaces of the formation. So the pressure of the fluid in the pore space is called formation pressure. And there are three categories. First is normal pressure. What is it? Normal pressure is the hydrostatic pressure of water, salt water, extending all the way from surface to the depth of interest. So this is all the whole column of salt water. So average normal pressure gradient for salt water is in the range of 0.433 psi per foot to 0 0.478 psi per foot. And remember, the normal pressure gradient varies in regions. However, in IWCF and IADC well control, it takes 0 0.465 psi per foot as the norm, as the normal pressure gradient. And this is the figure you need to remember for your test. Whatever the gradient above the normal gradient is called abnormal pressure. And whatever is below the normal pressure gradient is called subnormal pressure. Simple. Now we come to a kick. What make a kick happen? There are two conditions to make a kick happen. Number one, which is the formation pressure, PF. We call it PF. Formation pressure needs to be greater than hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the well bore. This is the well bore and this is the mud. So this is the hydrostatic pressure in here, right? We call it HP mud. And the condition number two is the formation is contained of, is contained in fluid and it is permeable. If the formation is not permeable, the kick can't happen. 
Now look at this formation here. This part here, it has no porosity. So it has no permeability at all. And this part here, it has pore, it is porous. The formation is porous, but the pores are not connected together. So this formation here is also not permeable. Now this formation here close to the whale bore here. This is the example only. The pores are connected together. So this formation here has permeability. It is permeable. And if the formation pressure is greater than the hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the web wall, will have a kick. The formation fluid from this formation here will come in the web wall. That's called a kick. So remember those two conditions. Now let's look at the effect of formation pressure and permeability on shutting pressure. When we talk about shutting pressure, there are two figures we're looking at. Number one is shutting casing pressure, and number two is shutting drill pipe pressure. So now let's first take a look at the formation pressure. And now we take the example that this formation is permeable, and formation pressure is greater than hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the wearable. So what does formation pressure do? It affects the certain drill pipe pressure, SIDPV, all right? The certain drill pipe pressure demonstrates the differential pressure of formation pressure versus the hydrostatic of the mud in the web wall. The greater the formation pressure against the hydrostatic pressure of the mud, the higher the certain drill pipe pressure is. And now the formation pressure has no effect on certain casing pressure at all. At all, zero effect. Okay? It has to be clear at this point. You, you will meet this question in the test. Number two is the effect of permeability. The high permeability, the reflux flows in the well, well more faster. So what it means? It means if the formation here has the higher, the permeability means the more permeable it is, the formation fluid will flow faster through it. So hence, for formation fluid will flow into the well, well more faster. What does it do with the certain pressure? It has no effect on the certain drupal pressure at all. It doesn't affect your certain drupal pressure, right? Remember this, we will explain why. It affects the certain casing pressure. Permeability affects the certain casing pressure. It affects the size of the influx too. Highly permeable, the bigger the size of the influx. The highly permeable, the higher certain casing pressure. We'll come to, we'll explain more, uh, the, this phenomenon later. Now this is what we observe, and this is the rest of that. You, you can remember. Now let's come to the third thing is the effect of shut in time on shutting pressure and the size of the influx. Time to shutting, the faster we shut the valley, we know that smaller the size of the influx is. So apparently it affects the size of the influx. What does it do? What else? It also affects the shutting casing pressure because the size of the influx will affect the, the, the shutting casing pressure. So the faster shutting, the smaller size of the, the influx, the smaller the certain casing pressure is, and vice versa. And it has the time of shutting has no effect on shutting drip pressure at all, right? Now, you may ask the question: Why usually you see certain casing pressure greater than certain drip pressure? Right before the kick, we have formation pressure, right? Either smaller or equals to the hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the wear ball in the string and in, in the less. The equilibrium of the pressure is the principle, the whole point of the principle. Once the well, once you take the kick and the weld is shutting, it is a closed system between formation 
and the wear ball. And when we talk about the wear ball, there are two parts. The first part is inside the drill string. This part inside the drill string. And the second part is the annulus of the wear ball, right? When we talk about the wear ball, we talk about these two parts. All right, so when we have the influx, we shut the welding in the drill string, we have only whole mud, only one single mud, whole mud, full column of mud in the drill string. But in the annulus, you don't have the whole mud anymore. You have the mud and you have the influx. Now, when shooting casing pressure is greater than shooting drill bar pressure, it is not in horizontal well. It, in, it is either in vertical well or in deviated well, but not in horizontal well. We'll explain it later. Now, in this example here, we take formation pressure, pore pressure of 17.5 ppg, and this is a vertical well. So we have measure depth equals TVD, 10,000 feet. Mud in the hole, we are doing with 17.4 ppg. We shut the well in. We have five barrel gates. Now we were we in the BHA. We have BHA height about 90 feet. The glass gradient is 0.1 psi per foot. This size is 12.25 inch, which is 5 quarter inch hole. And BHA OD is 8 quarter inch OD. So upon the shutter, upon the shutting, what do we have in the screen? As we said before, in the screen we have full hole mud 17.4 ppc. We work out how the of pressure of this mud is 9,040 IPSI. In the annulus, we have two parts. We have the influx, which is a gas in here, for example, and we have the mud above it. All right, now let's work out the, the height, how high is the influx in the, in the annulus now. We have, we let's first work out the annulus volume per foot. All right, this is the classic formula. Right, we work out is 0 0.0079 barrel per foot. We have volume of the influx, which is a bit pit gain, five barrels. Take this pit gain, all right? Now, this is a vertical well. So we have the height of the influx equals the length of the influx. It may be different in deviated well, and it may it, it for sure different, different in horizontal well. In this case, vertical well, we have length equal height of the influx. So we take five barrel divided by the annular volume barrel per foot. We have the height, 63 feet, which is also the length and the height of the influx. We work out the hydrostatic pressure of this influx. We take the, the height times the gas, the gas gradient, which is 0.1 psi per foot. And so it is 6.3 psi, right? Very little pressure caused by the hydrostatic pressure of the influx. Now we work out the residual hydrostatic pressure of the mud above the influx. So what is the height of the mud in the annulus now? We take 10,000 feet minus 63 feet, we have 9937 feet. So we work out hydrostatic pressure with this classic uh, formula, we have 8,991 psi. Now look, this pressure is different from the pressure of the whole mud in the real string before here, 9,048 psi, see that? So now we work out the formation pressure. Now, because this is a closed system, this is a, uh, a, a, an equilibrium state of pressure. So formation pressure, we have it, we have it before is, which is pore pressure, 17.5, right? We work it out, which, which is 9,100 psi. So this formation pressure will equate the hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the string plus what? Plus the certain dupai pressure because it shows the differential between formation pressure and hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the string. So we work out certain dupai pressure will be 9100 minus 9,400 psi equate 52 psi. This is what we suppose to see on certain dupai pressure here. 52 psi. Now, how much should we see the shut in case of pressure? Uh, probably, but for sure, it will be greater than this shut in drip by pressure. All right, we have the equilibrium state of pressure 
formation pressure equates the hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the annulus plus the hydrostatic pressure of the influx in the annulus and plus what? Plus shipping basin pressure. So what is the hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the annulus? 9,991 psi. What is the hydrostatic pressure of the influx? 6.3 psi. All right. Plus certain case pressure. So certain case pressure now equates 9,991 9, minus 8,991 minus 6.3 equals 102.7 psi. So it's about 103 psi. So now you see shutting case in pressure is greater than shutting to by pressure. So I hope this explanation explains and answers your question why shutting case in pressure is greater than shutting to by pressure if the well is not a horizontal well. So when will you see shutting case in pressure equal to shutting to by pressure? The answer is when it is in, in, in the horizontal section of the web. We use the same figures as the previous example, but now we just change the well depth and the inclination. Now the measure depth is 15,000 feet, which is all the way from here to the bit. The TVD is the true vertical depth. It's measured straight vertically from the well head right perpendicularly to the plane of the tail of, 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 of the of the of the well of the bottom hole all right so this tv now is only 10,000 feet but measure depth is 15,000 feet so well inclination is 90 degree right what is hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the string we work on the tv day it's 9,040 psi before what is the hydrostatic of the pressure uh, hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the annulus we have annulus in the annulus here. We have mud in this part and influx in this part. part. All right. So the higher slot pressure is also from here. It's just all the way up here from the surface. So same. All right. We take 10,000 uh, foot times 17.4 PBG times 0 0.052. We have the same 9,040 APSI of the higher slot pressure. So the higher slot pressure of the mud in the stream and in the annulus they are all the same. So what is the difference? No difference. So when the, the well is shutting and the kick is in here, now in here we have the length of the kick is from here to here. The length of the kick is the is, is same as before. With five barrel, we work out with 63 feet. But the height of the kick is only about one foot. It's 12 a quarter inch, right? So it's about one foot only. So what is well, the pressure of one foot of, of influx? almost nothing right neglected so that's why now you see no difference in certain case in pressure and notion and versus certain group of pressure right i hope this explains and answers the question why in horizontal well certain case in pressure equals equals certain group of pressure so what about the question when do you say certain case in pressure is less than certain group of pressure so to me there are only two chances Number one, very slim chance that you at the same time you have back cough on the annulus here. Once you have back cough in the annulus, you have restriction in the annulus, restricted flow in the restriction. You almost cannot read the pressure on the annulus. So at the kick time, you have back cough. So you can't see the, end, the pressure on the annulus. You can only see the shirt injury by pressure. So that's the reason why shirt injury by pressure is greater than shirt in case of pressure. The second chance is it could be the well bore ballooning, right? But we need more information to determine if the well bore is ballooning, right? I have made another video explaining well bore ballooning phenomenon, right? Please check out this video in my video channel, channel or on my website at www.drilling-academy.com for detail and explanation. All right, guys, thank you very much, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And hope it does explain and does answer some of the questions and does really provide you the basis of well control. And see you soon in the next session. Bye.